But let's just start with talking with some of the reforms that have happened in Kenya and, and where you see the country right now in providing health care for all Kenyans, particularly those who cannot afford private health care. Well, you know, um, the country is going through very interesting changes at the moment. There is an atmosphere of reform. Health care so far has not been very affordable or accessible to the majority of Kenyans. It is said that about 50% of Kenyans live below the poverty line. That figure may be a little high, but we know that we spend about 56% of, of our money for out-of-pocket expenses when we are purchasing health care. The aim of the Minister at the moment is to reduce out-of-pocket expenses by fast-tracking social health insurance so that we can have universal health care. Now, this is a project which is very ambitious, but we have started very aggressively. And so far as I speak today, I would comfortably say that at least 26% of Kenyans have access to health care through social health insurance. And we hope that by the end of the year, that figure should be increased to 60%. When you talk about social health insurance, what would this entail? Would, th would this mean that all Kenyans would have to pay a certain amount to be able to have access to, to health care? How would it work? Yes, it would work along the lines that we have now. At the moment, we have what we call a contributor scheme, whereby people who have an income uh, contribute some money to social health insurance, and they get both outpatient and inpatient cover. Now, we know that there are people who don't uh, have money, who are not employed on a regular basis, who are uh, very poor, like uh, unemployed peasants in the countryside and so on. So we, have, we are coming up with a scheme called the indigent scheme, whereby government will put money in this social health insurance pool, and that money will be used to cover the indigent so that they too can have access to health care. You realize that our constitution at the moment, Article 43, says that every Kenyan has a right to affordable and quality health care, including reproductive health. Government knowing full well that it doesn't have all the money to provide quality health care to all kinds. And today, we must proceed along the line where somebody pays according to his ability and gets according to his need. Let's talk a little bit about some of the, some of the providers, the healthcare providers that have come into this space. We have seen faith-based organizations, for instance, and NGOs also operating in this space. When it comes to attracting you know, such healthcare providers to come in where they are donor funded, just, just how open has Kenya been in being able to, to support this from a legislative point of view, to be able to support organizations like this, so that where they, the government is unable to fill that gap, you do have these other organizations that are coming in and filling that gap? As you know, healthcare provision in this country has always been a shared responsibility between the government and the <coughs> private sector. Uh, particularly affordable health care is, is something that has been shared between the government and faith-based organizations, particularly missionary hospitals. They do give health care at a cost that most ordinary Kenyans can afford. What we decided therefore in government is to partner with these NGOs and faith-based organizations so that we can work together to the extent that in the year 2009, early in 2009, I, as Minister for Medical Services, signed a memorandum of understanding with all faith-based organizations who run healthcare services so that we can work together. What the government does is that we quite often provide them with nurses and doctors. We also work together in training. And much more recently, we have been very working very, very close together in the supply chain for pharmaceuticals. The faith-based organization have what they call medicine for essential drugs, meds, uh, which supplies drugs to faith-based organization. And we have the Kenya Medical Supplies Agency. In area where meds has more access, we work together. In area where cancer has more access, we work together so that we have synergy in the provision of pharmaceuticals to our facilities. But one area which is very important in human resources development, where we work very closely together. And so we hope that as we uh, fast track uh, universal health care, this will include uh, both the private and public sector. And Kenyans who want to have health care in the private sector 
will do so through this social health insurance scheme. Let's they just are already doing so, and we hope to continue. Let's just talk about the the, the private sector. You know, in 2008, the, there was about 34 percent of of healthcare was being provided at, at a private sector level, and sometimes you find that with this particular sector, because it's for 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 profit. Um, some of the some of the prices can be a bit exorbitant. That it is difficult for people who who might be able to afford to pay for for healthcare would still be, be be struggling to do so because the prices are so high. Does the Kenyan government at all regulate how much the private sector charges for their services? Well, yes. This is this is this is a problem I really have at hand. I mean, the private sector has priced itself out of the market in many many ways. Private sector healthcare is very expensive. And uh, at the moment, I'm mulling with the idea on how to intervene in this regard. So very soon, I shall be meeting the medical practitioners and dentist board to find out how we can deal with this problem. As I told you earlier, the only way that most Kenyans can access private health care provision is through insurance. Uh, those of us at the moment who can go to the, some of the private hospitals and uh, get uh, health care uh, do so through insurance. And that's a very small percentage of Kenyans because private health care insurance covers only about 1 to 2 percent of Kenyans, and that's very small. It means, therefore, that for other Kenyans to have access to these facilities, which are quite often very good for health care, really something that should be done on two, on two fronts. One, about the cost and two, about insurance, so that when we talk about affordability, we, we can talk about it in reality in concrete terms, that people will actually have access to these facilities. But at the moment, I must say, they are rather high. And even the cost of drugs in this country is pretty high for most Kenyans. Those are some of the teething issues that we must deal with if healthcare is going to be affordable and accessible to most of Kenyans today, particularly in the private sector.